You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to the official third episode of Feli's Fishbowl. I don't know why you can't see it, but I was doing finger guns as I said that. Weird flex. Um, But today we have a very exciting episode, and this is my first more educational episode out of the three that I've released so far. This one I wanted to put out there as a disclaimer as a guide for all of you that are marketing your businesses online, making your way, maybe by yourself, maybe you have an assistant, but trying to make those sales come in consistently and preferably a little bit quicker. So this episode is all about the power of omnipresence behind your brand, the power of showing up on multiple platforms as you market your business. No, around here we do not believe in only showing up on Instagram, on only posting to Instagram, or on mastering Instagram, and then once you're comfortable, let's learn a new platform. No, 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 no. First and foremost, I do not believe in any one-size-fits-all business, marketing, any type of advice. There's no such thing as a strategy that can apply to every single business for every single person. We all have different energies. We all work in different ways. I do not believe in that. But what I do believe is that every single business should use email. Whether you use TikTok and email, Instagram and email, blogs and email, podcast and email, do not care. But every business can benefit from email and should be using email because email is one of the only ones that we actually get to own that list and can never lose those leads. I'm literally recording this the day that Instagram had the glitch and all these people lost their accounts and all these people lost massive amounts of their following. Get email. Anyways, back to it. Why do I talk so much about omnipresence? Why do I believe so much in being on more than one platform when it comes to marketing your business? The marketing rule of seven is the answer to that. I am a strong believer in the marketing rule of seven, which states that people need to hear something seven. The marketing rule of seven states that people need to hear something seven times before they're ready to buy. Before they're ready to buy being the key word, meaning they need to see your content, they need to see your offer more than seven times, more likely like 12, 15, maybe 21 times. People need to see your content consistently. There is so much noise in the online space. There's so many distractions on Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn and all of these other things. Everybody listens to podcasts passively. I know you're doing something else while you're listening to this. There's no way you're sitting, staring at your Spotify screen, listening to the audio, watching the seconds tick. That'd be weird. I don't expect you to. But that is also why I repeat the same subjects over and over again. So when it comes to the marketing rule of seven, the easiest way to combat that instead of posting to Instagram seven times in a row is to post in multiple formats in multiple places. So you want to be sharing on TikTok. You want to be sharing on Instagram. You want to be sharing to your email list. You want to talk about it on your podcast. And that way, people start to know you and know your offers and know what you're about. Because if you mention your package only once, they'll never remember. Even if they watch your content every day, if you never mention the name of your package, they won't know it. Because people just aren't paying as close as attention as you think. They need you to put it in their face. Shove it down their throats. 
And for me, I'm going to talk about omnipresence and I'm going to encourage you to dive into and embrace content repurposing to build that omnipresence. Another reason omnipresence is so powerful is that everybody consumes content differently. Personally, I really like reading. I like to read emails and I like to read blogs. Not a big fan of reading carousels or reading Instagram captions or reading TikTok captions. I find those too squished, too messy. And like the videos, man, if you don't have subtitles, not watching. If you take too long to get to your point, not watching. Same for podcasts. If your podcast episode is over 20 minutes, not listening. Like I'm picky (laughs) with the content I consume and I can guarantee you I'm not the only one. So when you're creating content for your audience, meet them halfway. I'm not saying create every single thing possible, but I'm saying to create short form videos and to create long form content and to create written content and to create audio content because not everybody likes to read, not everybody likes to listen, not everybody likes to watch, but at some point in that content journey, you're going to hit your people. And then also the hottest leads, in my opinion, the hottest leads are on your email list, but the hottest leads are going to be looking at multiple spots of your content. They might find you on TikTok and then start watching you on Instagram so they can see your stories and see like more about what you're about. Or they might find you at a summit and join your email list and read your emails and just be silent creepers until they're ready to buy from you or as they get to know you, right? So for example, we see all the time those people who say, they found me and they invested in me same day. You know what that person did before investing in you? They consumed a boatload of content. Maybe they messaged you. Maybe they didn't. I'm the type who won't message. I will not message someone. I will just dig. I will find your email list. I will find your website. I will find your TikTok. I will find podcast episodes you've spoken on. I will go through your Instagram content in depth, look through your highlights, look through your stories, look through your posts back six months to see if you're really about what you're saying you're about. And because of the amount of content you can find, it cuts your current version time in half. Because if you only have an Instagram account and you only post carousels and you have no updated highlights, and you aren't posting anything of value to your stories, and I can't find anything in your link in bio or in your highlights or mentioned of like podcasts or different platforms, it's not as easy to get the full picture. If you're a coach, people want to see what it's like when you coach. If you're a service provider, people want to see what it's like to be in your services. And if you don't have multiple types of content showcasing that, it's going to take longer for people to buy. And when I say multiple types of content, I'm not just saying like, I want to see podcasts, I want to see carousels, I want to see short form videos, I want to see long form videos. I mean, like, I want to see emotional. I want to see storytelling. I want to see analytical. I want to see testimonials and transformations and like, Who do you believe your offer is for? Who do you believe benefits from this? Can I see myself in that? Do I need to message this person and see like, is this actually for me? Like you're, you're attracting me, but your ideal client isn't me. So like, can I still buy this or or no, right? If your marketing says that you're a coach for virtual assistants, does that mean that you don't work with web designers? Does that mean that you don't work with social media managers? They're all service providers, they're all online done for you services. But if you specify virtual assistants, and I'm not saying this is wrong, I do think there's value in speaking to your person. In all of my marketing for the agency, I specify it's for people who have podcasts. My favorite repurposing workflow is from a podcast to blogs to emails to captions. But that doesn't mean you can't create content in a different format. You could have a reoccurring weekly Facebook Live for your core content, or you could be a YouTuber, or you could have gone through a period where you ran masterclasses every single week for 
a year and I can repurpose those, right? But in my content for the sake of being specific and helping people visualize, I say podcasters. But I do then go off and say, this is the type of content we we repurpose. This is what could be your core content. And in that sense, it helps people see themselves in your offer. I feel like I went on a complete tangent. All right, tangent aside, let's get back to omnipresence. All of this speaks to putting out more content. And I don't mean like I want you to be creating 100 pieces of content a day. I'm saying if you're posting to TikTok, share it to Pinterest and share it to YouTube. If you're writing emails, repurpose those emails to you into carousels or into blog posts or into podcasts. Like, don't let your content stop at one piece. Total gem for a different episode. By having the same consistent message on multiple platforms, you're building your brand authority online through your omnipresence. When someone can find you on TikTok and then come to your Instagram and see that you're the same person, it builds your authority because it makes you credible. I've listened to people's podcasts and then I've gone to their Instagram and there's a disconnect. It's like their podcast is talking about completely different things, which is fine, but don't label it as the podcast connected to your business. If it has nothing to do with your business, you can have a personal podcast. That's totally okay. You can mention your business and your services, but if on your, your Instagram, it says like, listen to my podcast, know more about my business. And the podcast has nothing to do with the services that you offer and nothing to do with the, the clients that you serve, there's going to be a disconnect and you're going to lose people because they don't trust you to be consistent. So I think somewhere in there, (laughs) I nailed why omnipresence is so powerful for your brand. It's hitting the marketing rule of seven. You get to repeat yourself again and again without annoying and boring your audience because it's in different formats on different platforms, which hits point two. Everyone consumes content differently. You can't just put out one type of content and expect masses. You're going to get your people from that type, but it won't be everyone. It cuts your conversion time in half because they're seeing your content more and more and they're consuming your content more and more and they're learning about what you do and how to work with you. And then last, I believe it's the fourth point, (laughs) if I didn't add extra points in there, but it builds your brand authority, having a consistent brand across multiple platforms. And I don't mean brand in the sense of colors and fonts. I mean consistent messaging and consistent presence. If you talk about hating dancing trends on Instagram and then I go to your TikTok and see you dancing, there's a disconnect. I want to see your brand and I want your brand to have authority in this space as being consistent to you, consistent to your brand. I've seen it again and again with our clients at Valley Day VA, the content repurposing agency, because as our clients start to show up on different platforms and it increases their consistency of how people can find them and how people can connect with them, they start to sell more because people are seeing you more and they're hearing about you more and they're able to get to know you just a little bit more than if you were only posting carousels or if you were only speaking at summits, right? They need that extra layer, preferably in three or more platforms. And if you are someone who's interested in building your omnipresence and aren't wanting to create all the content yourself, head to the show notes, check out the service guide to learn more about Valley Day VA and how we work with our clients in a content repurposing capacity to build your omnipresence so that you can cut your conversion time in half. Oi! Before you skip to the next episode, I wanted to share with you the details of our very exciting podcast launch giveaway. I have two ways that you can enter. The first is rate, review, send me a screenshot at info at The second way is your stereotypical share to Instagram and tag me at Felly Day and at Felly's Fishbowl. The accounts will be linked in the show notes, but you will need to tag at least one of them to be entered into the giveaway or send me the screenshot so that I know and can track your entries. If you do both, 
two entries. Um, the five winners of this giveaway will be invited to a private group marketing workshop where we're going to discuss a feel-good marketing strategy and how everyone can start the new year with a marketing strategy that they can get their energy behind. That's it. That's all. Let's get to the outro. And that's all I have for you on this episode of Felly's Fishbowl. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, whatever it is that your listening platform asks you to do for the shows that you love. Yes, I winked when I said that. <laughs> if you head down to our show notes, you'll be able to check out our service guide and see a little bit more what it's like to work with Felly Day VA. You can also follow us on Instagram at Felly Day VA and Felly's Fishbowl. And please, if you listened and want to share it, tag us. I love to know who's listening and learning along with the show. And we will chat soon.